Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hello. I'm Jessica Hover. <laughs> I'm so excited to see you. I can't remember what's next. My name is Lane Ling Trilland, and this is Very Good Enough, a podcast from Very Good Mothers Club. And today we have a returning guest, mm-hmm. our first returning guest. You guys requested. This is in direct response to you mm-hmm. asking for her to come back. We have Dr. Sam Rader today. Her episode last season was like at one of your guys' favorites, mm-hmm. and everybody was like, get that lady back. So I did. Um, but I've asked her to come back and do something a little bit different this time because – like kind of selfishly because I need something Mm. and then kind of out of just this like inside knowing of like, I really think we need this. Yeah. Um, I invited Sam back to talk about anger Mm -hmm. because I, I feel this gap in the way that we've been trying to like work our way through some issues. I I feel like the topic of anger kind of underlies a lot of your guys' questions. Mm -hmm. And here on the podcast, we've talked a lot about boundaries in a different, a bunch of different ways. Yeah. But I, but I feel this missing piece of like, oh, for there to be boundaries, part of what has to happen is that we have to get in touch with our um, natural, healthy, instinctive anger. Mm-hmm. We have to be able to recognize like, oh, this hot feeling is like a rise inside of me saying like something needs to be protected that's here. Right. And, and that's – I think that's like a – it's a piece of the the boundary conversation, which is the conversation about our relationships with our kids and our, our mother-in-laws and our spouses and even like ourselves and yeah. and the way that larger systems treat us. You know, so like everywhere that we talk about these things, I just feel like there's this – almost like we're trying to build a wall, but there's no um, like putty between the bricks or something. Sure. And I I had planned to talk about it myself. And then as I sat down writing notes and thinking about this season, I realized like, oh, I need help. Yeah. <laughs> like this is a thing I really need help about. And fortunately, I have this person in my life who speaks really passionately and really beautifully and with a lot of authority about this. Yeah. So I've brought Sam to talk about this thing um, because I think we need it. We and I'm do. so excited. We actually haven't had the conversation yet. And I'm yeah. so excited to have it. I'm so excited for you guys to get to hear it. Yeah. I think everything related to anger and parenting is slightly heightened mm. because we're so afraid of doing it wrong. Yeah. Afraid of like misusing our anger. And so mm-hmm. I'm excited to learn more about healthy anger and figure mm-hmm. out how do we use it and kind of where where is it appropriate to have it yeah. and I don't know. I'm I'm just excited mm-hmm. for this one. And it's fun to do this intro pre-having the conversation because we're right there with you being mm-hmm. like, okay, interesting. Anger, how does that relate to me? Yeah. And I just I just had a meet up with a, some moms um 2 days ago and one was like, I've never felt as angry as I feel now that I have kids. It's mm-hmm. like they pull something that I didn't even know was there. Yeah. And every mom in the room was like, yeah, I mm-hmm. feel that too. Some some kind of like rage yeah. <laughs> yeah. that happens in us. And like many of us are like, we wouldn't even really describe ourselves as angry people, Mm -hmm. but there is something about parenting, especially parenting young ones um, that, that Mm -hmm. sets a fire inside of us. Yeah. We also have a, a, we want to, we, I see in myself and lots of Mm -hmm. people, there's a containing response when we see anger in our children, like, whoa, let's tamp that down. So I'm also going to ask Sam about like how, how now that we've learned about anger, like how do we mm-hmm. foster healthy development of that within that. our children so that they grow up with, as people who have like an integrated sense mm-hmm. of it and and know what to do with it. Awesome. So, well, here we go. Let's do it. I'm so excited. See you on the other side. We just recorded an intro, and what I said to the people was the reason, because they they do want to hear the back half of the coping styles in a big way, but I just have this like sense inside that this is what we need right mm-hmm. now, and so I'm doing yeah. some inner authority, um, because we talk a ton about boundaries, right? Like most of the questions that people bring us are relationship focused, whether it's like with their kids or with their husbands, there's a lot of extended family and mother-in-law and, and even like other moms, how do I Mm -hmm. deal with this thing between other moms and it's stuff that leads really naturally into like, okay, this is what boundaries looks like in that section and that section. But I feel there's this piece missing Mm -hmm. from what we're talking about. There's like a piece missing from that being natural or like flowing very clearly, like it's still 
people thinking about, should I have a boundary here and what should it be? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I feel like the piece that's missing from the way that we're having this conversation and even the way that I'm practicing in this in my life is like it coming from this instinctive inside space being like, I just feel like there's something meaty, like my teeth want to, are missing something to like bite while yeah. we talk about these really essential things. Yeah. And then on my end, we're dealing with a lot of moms who like feel so bad about this surprise anger or surprise rage they're experiencing. I was telling Lane, like moms who say, I've never felt as mad as I do now when with my kids or about certain things. I didn't know I had this inside me. I don't know what to do with it. Or Lane pointing out like when we see anger in our kids, the temptation to like quick quiet it like don't don't be disruptive let's let's squash that mm -hmm. or, or no negativity from you child like sure. yeah, we get scared about seeing yeah. like negative looking yeah. things uh -huh. in children and so much of us uh, so many of us feel like I just don't want to parent my kids wrong I don't want my anger to come out in a way that makes them not want to be around me or like somehow fail them with my anger so it's really this kind of scary topic of like what's it for what are we supposed to do with anger how do we how do we have healthy anger inside of us and also help our kids know what to do with that emotion and so i think the conversation here is so important and that even the people listening like at this point would be like oh yeah this is why i need this topic versus the other thing I thought I needed. Yeah. This is coming up so much in our community. Yeah. So then maybe my first question to you would be like, could we start with like, is anger bad? Like yeah. we feel bad sometimes oh, when yeah. anger comes up, you know, like our training teaches us to be like, that's one of the bad feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the way I see it, anger is simply self-love and self-protection. Anger is this natural, innate, inborn instinct um, that's this vibrating aliveness showing us where our edges are. Mm. It, is, it is the guard at the gate. It is the, the activation at our perimeter showing us where our innate animal instinct and, uh, boundaries exist. Mm. So the only time we get angry is if we're being violated. It's really simple. Anger is is a sacred inborn instinct to protect the self and all animals have it. So if you think about like a nature video where you've seen an animal get angry, uh, maybe like a lion who's just like lazing around, hanging out. Because if you think about animals, they're not angry very often, right? Yeah, they're yeah. mostly either eating or cuddling. Like that's <laughs> kind of like... Yeah our two modes as animals, right? Yeah. We want to snuggle and we want to eat. And even eating doesn't come from anger. It just comes from hunger. Mm -hmm. But um, when there's actual anger, it's because something's been invading the territory. Someone's effing with you, right? Mm -hmm. There's like, you know, a, a cub, a, a lion cub is, you know, nudging mom one too many times. And she's finally yeah. like, <clears throat> Yeah, mm -hmm. I just you know? saw this. I just saw this in a nature video, Dr. Sam. I literally, I watched the lion growl at the lion cub and I felt so validated. I like stopped Whoa. it. I was like, look, look, she just did that. She did what I do. And I didn't, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. This is so <laughs> real. They just, they just react or like, yep. yeah. It's a healthy, appropriate, mm. organizing mm, that's energy, cool. anger. Yeah. So the cub's going, mom, 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 mom. And finally the lion's like, mm -hmm. stop, enough, mm -hmm. right? And then the cub's like, oh, okay, thanks, mom. Uh -huh. Now I know where the edge is. Yeah. So That's we're all so just cool. looking for each other's edges. I remember seeing this nature video once. It was, it was um, narrated by James Earl Jones. And he said, in the savannah, there is neither malice nor guilt. Mm. Whoa. Because oh, so I want good. us to think about that anger is not malice. Malice is mean. Mm -hmm. Malice is what happens when we hold anger in and we hold it in and we hold it in and it festers mm. into this toxic sludge. It festers into hate and then it mm -hmm. becomes cruelty. Yeah. And then it's mean. And that is, is bad. Mm -hmm. That's the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. the anger held in that turns 
cruel, the hate, that's bad. Anger, when fully expressed in the moment, like the mama lion, like <clears throat> mm -hmm. that is just love. That is just showing us where the boundary is so that we don't develop a resentment. So mm -hmm. if the baby lion nudged mama, nudged mama, nudged mama, and mama lion swallowed the anger, that anger would go inside and become resentment to that baby lion. Mm -hmm. And maybe mama wouldn't want to feed that baby lion. All the other baby lions would become the favorite baby lions. And the annoying baby lion that kept pushing the boundaries and kept pushing the boundaries and never got told no would become the thing that was hated, resented, outcast, unloved. Yeah. So ironically, the way I see it, anger is the only way to sustain love. Hmm. Because if you don't express it and you don't draw the line and you don't say stop, it turns into hate. And you Ooh. stop. Such a helpful distinction, Sam. I think we feel scared that every time we feel anger, it's the other thing. Mm -hmm. You know, like we we accuse ourselves of having that ugly thing every time we feel the anger come up. And so it's it's so powerful to see those two split apart and just saying like this one and not that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very ironic that not expressing anger is when things do turn to hate and turn ugly. It's when you express anger that everything's okay again. So if you, when you saw the nature video, Jess, yeah, one mom went, <clears throat> what happened after? It was fine. It was like done. The little cub just backed up and then that was, the moment was over. Precisely. And it happened a few times. It happened around like the way it was that thing of like the cub being too much, like too aggressive or I don't know what they were doing, but something annoying <laughs> that the mom growled at. But then another time had to do with like eating and maybe taking the other cubs food or something and the mom again did it and then it just chilled out but it felt so like relatable <laughs> i was like yeah that's my life too i go through that but it's yeah. i i relate to everything you're saying because that temptation inside to suppress it like as if this is the ugly bad thing then later i'm actually more mad or i i yell in a way that actually feels mean and then i'm like oh my gosh that that was so ugly but then i go to the guilt thing where I love this kind of middle ground of like, it's normal. It's, it's a healthy response to something being crossed. And the healthiest thing you can do is tell the little one no and keep loving them wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anger is a constructive force mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. basically what anger does is it carves out energetic boundaries between things mm -hmm. of, of what's okay and what's not okay. So mm -hmm. Mom's energetic boundary with baby cub is number one, you don't fuck with me. Mm -hmm. And number two, you don't fuck with your siblings. Mm -hmm. The end. Otherwise, you are free, baby. Yeah. You do you. I trust you. I love you. You are free to do whatever you want within the bounds of mm -hmm. you don't fuck with me. You don't fuck with that. Mm -hmm. So it's it's an organizing principle. It's a constructive. It's building. Like it's literally constructive. It's building the structure Mm. of um, the bounds of what's okay and what's not okay. So I always like to draw this little symbol of like a heart inside a box when it comes to parenting where, you know, the four walls of the box are over here. You're not going to touch this hot stove. You're not going to run the street. You're not going to hit your sibling and you're not going to hit me, right? Those are the four walls of the box, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Other than that... So anything outside of those four walls is a no. Mm -hmm. Don't go near that edge. Absolutely mm -hmm. fucking. Mm -hmm. But anything inside of that box, do you have mm -hmm. fun? It's all heart. It's all love. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you want to play with your sibling? You want to share with your sibling? You want to dance? You want to sing? You want to snuggle with me? You want to run around in circles? You want to wear this outfit to school today? Great. Have all the life force, have all the choice, have all the freedom of expression. I love yeah. that for you. But you're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to hurt me. You're not going to hurt anyone else, period. Mm -hmm. And so that's all the boundary is, is if you get close to this line where things outside of this line is unsafe, there's a there's an electric fence, which is. <laughs> yeah. And it's. Yeah. If you think about the baby cub, by the way, my cat paper is like, oh, she's chattering her teeth. She, she hates when I get angry. <laughs> but if you think about the baby cub in the nature video, it's a gift 
to know, oh, so I don't get to become an asshole? Amazing. Mm -hmm. Because if that, it sounds like that particular baby cub maybe had a little too much testosterone in the body or something (laughs) and was like, I want to push these edges. Like, Mm, I want to be the only one that eats when it's feeding time. And I want to make mom's body my playground, not mom's sovereign body. Mm -hmm. And that cub is going to get itself into a lot. If mom allows all of that, this cub is going to grow up into a lion that's actually not embraced as part of the tribe. Yeah, right. Because this this cub is being indulged and not realizing how it impacts other people, which is one of the coping styles, and is um, is going to become an outcast and an unliked member of the tribe if mom doesn't show it. Actually, hey, wait, that's not okay with the healthy anger. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Can you – when I love that heart in the box so much, I actually think that I referenced you doing that in a, an episode that we mm-hmm. recorded before this. Um, but can that's easy for me to see with children. It's like so clear. Can you help me see it like with myself? Like, can we pull it into some adult relationships? You know, like, mm-hmm. is there a way to have to think about boundaries sure. in that way for like me? <laughs> well, I mean, I feel compelled to tell you a story of a date I went on the other night. Yes. Let's hear it, please. <laughs> It was the, it was a first date, but the guy is um, like deep in a spiritual practice. Well, also like I just relate with everyone full on because that's who I am. Yeah. But he was able to hold it, and it actually was like an incredible moment of rupture and repair for us, and it deepened our intimacy so much. But Aww. this thing kept happening on our first date where he he'd be doing whatever, and I'd be super engaged, and then he'd take him he'd all of a sudden judge himself like this part came in where it was like oh no I'm doing this, and then he'd blame me for it. Oh, oh. He, he was like, oh, I'm talking too much. And I'm like, oh, no, you're okay. And he's like, well, you have me self-conscious because. And I was like, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. So all of a sudden it's like this badness came in through his own super ego judging himself. Yeah. And then he tried to pin it on me and project it on me. And it yeah. happened once. And I was like, oh, wow, it feels like, you know, you made yourself bad there. And then you tried to make it it me making you bad and that feels really bad and we processed it he was like you're right oh my god i did do that well how thank you for teaching me that whatever then like an hour later he's incredible he's so incredible (laughs) then an hour later he did it way more intensely where i was like "Ooh, what we're talking about right now feels really scary to me and i feel like i need us to slow down and whatever and he's like well you Uh because i wasn't even making him bad but he was like but you and i was like no, like I with we were holding hands and I withdrew my, my hand uh-huh. and I said, this is not okay. Mm. You keep projecting your badness into me. This is not okay. And he tried to reach for my hand again. And he's like, no, I didn't mean it. And I was like, I said, no. And there was, we were sitting at a table and there was like a little line at the end of the table. And I kept drawing my line across it like this. I was like, you do not project into me. You do not project into me. This is a uh-huh. no. Because he wasn't seeing how big of a deal it was. And I literally yeah. said, I was like, this is a no. I don't want to hold your hand right now. This feels really bad. I will not take that bad in. Yeah. And he was like, oh. And he kind of like froze like the baby cub in a good way. And then he was like, oh, wow. Okay. Let me just take a minute because I'm really hearing that this is a big line for you. I was like, this is a big line for me. I won't yeah. have you do it again. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, okay, I see, I see what went on here. And I was like, thank you. And he's like, can I take your hand again? And I was like, yes. And then we wow. started the lovey-dovey again. And then he was like, holy shit, your power is so beautiful. Thank you for showing me where your edge is, you mm-hmm. know? And it let us like fall in trust a little deeper. And wow, we yeah. got back to tenderness and intimacy and a deeper tenderness and intimacy because, but you know, I, I don't normally on any date, let alone a first date, have to be like, no, yeah. <laughs> totally. like he kept doing it. And it was, it was just, you know, it felt so totally out of bounds. Like it was so yeah. totally out of bounds and, mm-hmm. and energetically violent for me to receive that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, yeah. I, he was mature enough to think. see all of me and see that, that, that my healthy anger is showing him where the edge is. And actually Mm -hmm. he thanked me so much for that over and over and over. And he said, you know, his last relationship, that was the toxic trait of his other partner was she would not ever give him a boundary or show him where her lines were. And then later her rage became so, so, so toxic that she cut him off and got rid of him because she had never shown him where the lines were. So he was like, thank God you're showing me 
clients are, this is going to be the foundation of us building something sustainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes me think like the opposite of what you could have done is something that I do and feel a lot is going into a thing with this goal of like, I, I want to be liked. I want at the end of this to be liked. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people will like you by just completely stepping all over you or, right. you know, like doing doing what you experienced. And you could have made, like traded your self-worth, self-awareness, instinctive no for like, okay, well, like I'll, I'll just listen and maybe I – you know, maybe in order to keep the peace, I will let him do this. And I just think that's really beautiful and powerful and takes, takes really valuing like, no, you can like me or not like me. I want to be well inside of my body, my mind, my experience. And the, it, you can't, you can't always have both. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Absolutely. I mean, some sometimes, I don't know, like your example was that on the other side of it, you both liked each other more because you, it was like a vulnerable act and then it, it went well. Um, but I think the, the I don't know if it's like the people, people pleasy tendency is just, just kind of let, let happen what needs to happen. And then maybe doing that thing that that ex did of like, well, I never enforced my boundaries. And then I realized what was going on. And now there's no way to exist with you because it's too far gone. And so now I'm just by, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So we're talking right now about one of the coping styles in, in my system. We're talking about the symbiotic coping style, which is when we allow and allow and allow, and we go with everyone else's program and we want to be liked so badly, want to be yeah. liked at the cost of having a self. Yeah. And what that does is it creates a killer inside. Mm-hmm. We end up killing off the person who we want to like us so very badly because we don't want them to get rid of us. But the irony is when we do that enough times, we hate them so damn much wow. that we split their neck and run and never mm. speak to them again. It's called wow. what I call the symbiotic cutoff. So yeah. anytime anger isn't expressed, it becomes incredibly destructive yeah, mm. and it becomes a killing thing. Mm-hmm. Now me going, this is my line. It's the opposite of a killing thing. It's a constructive, relational, let me show you where the edge is so that we can relate safely. Yeah. And there's one more thing I want to say about that, which is um, before I help people understand that anger is healthy and constructive, they worry that anger and love are two separate things mm. and that they are mutually exclusive. But like I was saying before, anger is the thing that keeps love on the rails and keeps love alive, but also when we're setting the boundary with anger and you guys were talking about this earlier of like how does it not feel mean how does it whatever Mm -hmm. i didn't do a great representation of how i was saying it at the table with the guy but essentially what i said was you're not bad i care about you i'm here connecting with you from a place of love and curiosity and i will not sit here and allow you to make yourself bad or make me bad. We're not doing Mm. faults here because this is a table of love. Mm. So the boundary is about love. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't saying with my boundary, you are bad for saying I am bad. Mm -hmm. Right. I was saying you are not bad and some weird judgy part is coming in and telling you that you're bad or I'm bad. And Mm -hmm. that's a no for me. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. You are beautiful. And so am I. And there's not going to, we're not going to do a blame game here. That's not on the menu for us. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, this feels really poignant to me in all of the areas where people are talking about their families, particularly like their adult family members. There's a lot of this feeling of like, I can't deal with like the way that my, my mom or my dad, when we go home, this thing happens and they're like this about my kids. And they always say this shit to me and my like these adults are like this yeah, at me, yeah. but I don't want to push them away is how I would be like translating yeah, what I'm right. hearing from people is like, mm-hmm. I can't deal with this, but I don't want to put, I'm afraid of losing these people. And I don't, I'm worried that if I say something, they will go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, we kind of have to call everyone's bluff because mm-hmm. it's kind of a manipulation of like, if you have a self and have a boundary, I'll go. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's, we're being bamboozled there because they're not going anywhere. They're your family. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. love you. They might, their ego might make them tantrum a little bit if you set a boundary. Yeah. But call their bluff. They're not going anywhere. And by the way, going takes two. 
Because if they go, well, huh, you can't treat me like that. I'm, I'm walking into the other room. You could just walk into the other room and go, come here, come mm-hmm. here, hug them and be like, that was scary for both of us, but I just need you to know where my boundary is. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they're not going to leave. They don't leave. They can't leave. Mm-hmm. They can't leave unless you let them leave. The other cool thing with this is I'm being a little dramatic right now with all the, the, the lion <clears throat> and me yeah. being like, no, at the table, like, mm, okay. right. But there's a way to really discover what your boundaries are and embody them in mm-hmm. a way that doesn't even require any of that drama. Like you could be like, hey, mom, I love you. And you did a great job parenting me. But this is this is my child, and you're going to need to trust my parenting of them. It doesn't feel good for you to tell me how to parent. Mm-hmm. You could do it that calm, mm-hmm. but that firm mm-hmm. of like, mom, in order for me to feel good about us, I need you to just let go and trust me with my kid. Yeah, That's my line. And if mom's like, well, I was just trying to help, I'd be like, I know, I know, but I'm going to start to not like you. If you keep doing that, and I really want to like you. So mm-hmm. that's my line. Might be wrong, might be right. I don't know, but that's my line. Yeah. 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 That's cool because, like, the, in that circumstance that you're describing, like, the anger is the thing that lets you know this line is being crossed. That's like your inside feeling of, like, oh, I know what's happening here. Right. I don't actually have to necessarily wield the outside act of anger, even. Like I, ideally it tells me inside and I go, whoa, there's that hot feeling. I know what that means. And then because I know I can actually quite peacefully be really mm-hmm. solid. Yeah, I like Absolutely. That. Yeah. It's interesting because people think anger is a thing you have to express, but anger, like you said, is it's just this inside um, alarm that an edge mm-hmm. is being crossed. And so it's just information and you don't have to necessarily express it. I mean, that's what happens too. Like if adults are coming to me and finally processing their childhoods, they're like, oh my God, I'm so angry with my parents. I should tell them. And I'm like, why? Mm. Why are you going to go tell them? That seems odd. Mm, like right. just what does that anger inform you to do now? Like where mm-hmm. are your lines? Like are you going to hold a better time boundary around when you see them? Are you going to you know, say no in the moment if they, you know, whatever, but you don't have to like come to them with this laundry list. And then you did this when I was a kid and then you did right. that. It's like, you know, that's not, that's not really what anger is about. Anger is an inside thing. Mm. Um, I was yeah. thinking this morning before we got on the call about that, because you were asking me like, what about, you know, um, encouraging your kids to ha- have anger? Yeah. I was thinking about, you know, as your kids are experimenting with anger, really encouraging them to express it, maybe even be like, yeah, like, tell me, tell me, what is it? You know, or helping them maybe push on a wall or be like, oh, you know, let them feel it. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking about the boundary to teach your kids, like, of what what is their anger and what it is, what is it for and was it not for? Mm-hmm. Of being like, okay, so your anger is there to show you you have full control over your body, your body. So if you if, if you don't want me tickling you, that's, that's your body. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to decide, but your anger does not have control over my body. Mm. So you can't make me get you a cookie. Mm -hmm. That's not what your anger is there for. Yeah. Your anger is there to protect your body, but your anger is not there to control other people. Mm -hmm. Just your body. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I love that. I love that. I I feel feel my brain going two directions, like one being, or like sort of hearing two directions, I guess, of permission. Like I, I'm hearing permission in two spaces where like one of them being like, oh, I actually like my anger is for me. And that is just a message for me. But also I, I mean, you know that I struggle with like instinctiveness and like allowing a thing to just happen Mm -hmm. to me. I'm like very controlled on the outside based on a lot of things, you know, but like being allowed to naturally have a rise. And like, if some of that anger does come up in the minute while the boundary is being crossed, like that also gets to be allowed. And I don't know if there's a question in that. (laughs) I mean, I think, I think they're just being, I think all of us making so much more room for the messiness Mm -hmm. of being human animals and and if I may, like in our relationship, you and I have a personal relationship. 
sometimes we get angry at each other. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it comes out in in messy ways and maybe even irrational ways or ways that don't feel good to either one of us. Yeah. But I've noticed that we both are able to come back with love and curiosity and be like, okay, what happened there? Mm -hmm. Like this didn't feel good or, oh, I guess I got triggered in this way or kind of do a little postmortem that's like really loving and really safe. And we've always just made so much room for each other's humanness. Like, Mm. like you were like, oh, sorry, I was triggered there. And I'm like, that's okay. You're allowed to be triggered. I love you. It makes sense, you know? Yeah. Um, And vice versa. And I think I really want there to be so much room in all of our human relationships for like really imperfect moments of like not doing the anger in the just right way, Mm -hmm. just being a brat or being passive aggressive or having it explode out of nowhere. Like that that's all just like, yeah, this is part of the thing. It's not always going to be like perfectly orchestrated experience. And can we, can we let all of these things unfold without punishing anyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that feels related to some of my advice around tantrums is there's a lot for me of working with parents on like they exploded like a volcano, like a bomb, like a thing that was too compressed and is designed to explode and now it's over. That part's over. So we can go back and do kind of like what you and I are talking about. You and I do the circle back really nicely. Like that's what I want parents to do with their children is like, okay, now we circle back to the original thing and just take care of that. But a lot of people want to then also focus on how big the explosion was and be like, well, now they they shouldn't have screamed and they shouldn't have kicked and they shouldn't. So now I have to deal with that as though that's behavior when really that it's like not behavior at that point. Mm. Once your child is in an explosive space, that's not like a choice that they made at, at that point. You know? sure. There are earlier things that we can work through together. But that part, you actually just be like, whoa, let's clean this up together mm. and we'll deal with the beginning thing and we'll lay back down like the lions in the savannah. And um, I think needing to have some of that for myself too, of being like, yep, whoa, that was a big explosion part. I actually sure. didn't pick to do that part. Okay. Yeah, Yikes. Cool. I'll clean up my mess and move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. None of us do. None of us, when we're, when all of us get real weird, like that's not like some choice. Mm-hmm. We're triggered. Mm-hmm. Right. Like we, yeah. we let, we've let go of our frontal lobes and we're in our, you know, animal brain yeah. and we're, we're having a moment. Yeah. 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 So in terms of like, wanting to come back to being these instinctive people who can feel the first thing inside rather than like suppressing the first thing and now getting stuck with these like toxic fumes of all the after stuff. Like how are there, what are some ways that we can learn to hear ourselves now and like sort of come back into alignment, get back in touch with that inside part? Like I think a lot of the people that we talk to are really, really distant from even noticing that part of themselves or like knowing how to hear their bodies. Yeah. It reminds me of working with people who have eating disorders who have like suppressed their hunger for so long that they actually don't even know where to begin with like intuitive eating. It feels like the suppression of, is that the right word? Suppression of anger makes it really scary to know like, well, what's allowed? And like, what if, what if anger erupts at a time when Mm -hmm. it, it turns out it wasn't appropriate or something um, sort of like I, I just talked with someone with an eating disorder and it came out of like, well, what if I'm hungry for something that's not good for me? And then I overeat the thing that I shouldn't have eaten anyway. It's, it feels like a similar confusion over something very natural. Mm-hmm. That's so beautifully said. Yeah. The way I see it in for un- anger or hunger or any other animal instinct is I personally don't believe in bad things or shoulds. Okay. Because that would be what psychologists would call the superego or the part that tries to make rules and judgments about things. And what I've noticed is when that's a very active part of the self, there is a lot of acting out because we're animals. We can't be controlled, right? right. And that that part that's like, I should eat this. I shouldn't eat that. That's a bad food. That's a bad emotion. That's actually when things start to split in really scary ways and we do overeat, Mm-hmm. And we do lash out is when you try to control our animal instincts, they turn into these monstrous things. Yeah. So it's like you try to repress sexuality, you end up diddling the altar boys. Like it's not yeah, it's not yeah. a safe thing to repress yeah. any of our animal instincts. They 
our instincts do fester into something frightening and destructive. So for me, you know, when I work with people with eating disorders, I help them see that there is no such thing as bad food. Hmm. It just isn't. And so hmm. if, if you know French fries are just carbs and salt and fat, which we need for our bodies, and there's nothing wrong with them at all, and you can have them whenever you want, you don't end up binging because you're like, oh, I can have French fries whenever I want. Let me have a few. Oh, that's satiating. I just had six. I don't need more. But if you're like, it's bad. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But I want it. And then you right. become the French fry monster, right? right, right same right. as the anger monster or the sex monster. These monster parts come out when we repress, repress, repress. Mm -hmm. So I think that... Um, starting to relate with hunger and anger and sexuality and desire as like these beautiful, sacred instincts within us, mm -hmm. taking off all that judgment and control is how they start to flow in a natural way. Like animals, again, no malice, right? It's, it's, it's all natural. There's nothing bad going on. They don't get fat because they eat whenever they're hungry and they stop whenever they're full, right? Like it's like the judgment is part of what creates the mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, but Lane, to your sense. question of how does someone even start exploring with this, maybe even just doing a little meditation, if we could like guide a little something right now, of, yeah. like anyone who's listening, just like sit back and just get comfy and close your eyes for a second. Just start breathing and start noticing like the edges of your being. Almost like, um, a tingling force field of aliveness around you. Just breathe with that. Now, during this interview, I've been intentionally using my voice in these intense ways to kind of draw out that anger from the listeners so that you're mm. starting to familiarize yourself with it. And I want you to just feel your edges and then make a little bit of an animal sound like, <clears throat> just try a little like, <clears throat> And notice how that grunt from the inside correlates with a strengthening of the feeling of that beautiful protective force field outside. Activating your edges. And just holding your edges as like the sacred self-protection. And imagining you've got these edges alive and your kid starts to play too close to the edge of a cliff. It's like... <clears throat> Come, come, up, come away from the edge of the cliff, right? It's this protective part. Breathing into that, imagining that, that healthy instinct to get things out of danger's way. That's all anger is. And now imagine that same kid that you love nudging you and one too many nudges and then going <clears throat> back off and letting your kid feel the healthy kind of, oh, whoops, and then melting back into the safety of, okay, mama's got me. Mama's not going to let me fall off a cliff. Mama's not going to let me be a little nudge. I'm safe. And so just feeling the constructive beauty of you having this vital aliveness at your edges, which is just your healthy anger that's there to protect and love yourself and those you care about. And just play with this throughout your days of noticing what it feels like to have edges and to have that aliveness where you're not just this limp pushover, but you've got you've got a little you've got a little edge there that can hold you and can keep things on the rails. Hmm. What a gift. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you for that. <laughs> feels good, right? And oh my god, so it feels so good. Like, it's when you when you really integrate your anger, it doesn't feel mean or bad in any way. It almost just yeah. feels like life force. It feels like creativity. Like I get so much more creative and productive mm -hmm. when I start to feel my no and my anger. Like if something trips my anger switch, I'm like, Woo, that was not okay. Now I want to go and like have sex and like paint a picture, <laughs> like, paint a house, like eat some there French fries. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I feel like alive. It just makes yeah. you alive, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, I think that's so poignant in the sense that, like, 
there there is a dullness to a lot of lives and, and to parts of my life and to a lot of what I hear, particularly yeah. from women mm-hmm. who are in spaces where they're not, there isn't a, there just isn't that vitality mm-hmm. and everything gets pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, pushed down until they're like, my fucking mother-in-law, like yeah, <laughs> right. in case they, they have to and they need to and they should because she's way up in their space all the time, you know, sure. like, and I, yeah, I, I love there's a lot of hopefulness for me in the idea of like, oh yeah, you get in touch with this anger and it's going to bring vitality to lots of these parts. Mm-hmm. And it also yeah. allows you to love more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, if if you said no to, to mother-in-law and then she was like, oh, sorry for stepping on your foot, you'd be like, I fucking love you. Come here. Yeah. Give me a hug. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool that you heard me. Oh my God. Because you're really yeah. feeling things when you let that anger integrate. It's like, it's almost like all your nerve endings come back up to life and you can mm-hmm. feel more, you can love more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that it's necessary? Maybe this is like one of the areas where I feel a little scared is like, I know I have these big old pockets of stuff that got pushed and pushed and pushed mm-hmm. since forever. Do mm-hmm. you think it's necessary to go and and retrieve those? Or do you think that just like correctly coming into an appropriate ang- like re- relationship with your anger in the now will just kind of like naturally ventilate and relieve that oh, old pressure? Such a good question. Before I answer it, can I come back? I was picturing this one thing to, to say about what we were saying before, which is like, um, you know, when we don't allow that healthy, ebullient life force of, of anger boundary around us, it can either fester into like hate that, that toxic hate, which becomes like the frustrated coping style, or it can, it can repress the whole system into like depression, Mm -hmm. um, like, like a deadness a numbness a depression and an anhedonia, which means no pleasure in pleasurable activities. Mm -hmm. So it's like that it's like, it's like, it's really, really not good to not oh, yeah. have that anger alive inside it. Beca- we become dead or we become mean. So mm-hmm. these, are, yes. these are terrible options. Totally. Um, but Lane, you're saying maybe like go in and process some of your early rage at the ways you were violated and there was no, um, I mean, that's always, you know, wonderful. Um to do. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you could um, do a little um, journaling um, so I could maybe give some shuttles. Like um, there's this uh, guy called Francis Weller. He's a psychotherapist and soul activist, and he creates these things called shuttles, which is like it's like the beginning of a sentence, and you write that beginning of a sentence and then complete it and complete it and complete it until you run out of things to say, and then you repeat it again, and you oh, keep wow. right. So well, let's make some up right now for ex- like – um, for exploring where your edges were violated as a little one, right? Like maybe you could write, I didn't like when, hmm. blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I didn't like when until you feel like you've said enough about that. And then maybe it was not okay that, da, 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 da. It was not okay that, da, 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 yeah. da. And then another one might be like, I say no, blah, 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 blah. I say mm-hmm. no, da, 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 da. Um, um, I I need, mm-hmm. I need, mm-hmm. um, and I want, I want, um, and I think that could help things start to organize around that. And of course, again, all of this is an inside job. It's not like then you ring up your parents and give them. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not necessary. Yeah. It's right. not necessary because they're. By the way, they've probably matured in the last thirty years. You know, so it's not right, really sure. about them anymore. It's about <laughs> these ghosts you're dealing with from your past yeah. that live inside of you. Yeah. Mm. I'm thinking like the the learning or mastering like the art of repairing the relationship. It's kind of what you guys talked about of like when something gets, I don't know, fragmented or something between the two of you, you give space and immediately come back and like normalize it. And like, you're okay. And I still love you. And that was fine. Good thing we did that. Look how healthy that was. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in this like time of parenting, you hear a lot more positivity around like, when you blow it with your kid, repair that, like apologize where needed, you know, move forward. I think for our parents, uh, at least when I look back at some of the things that confused me, it's some of the anger was appropriate and some of it was probably suppressed anger that just exploded out. And then as the child receiving it, it became very confusing as to like, wait, so why are you mad? Or like, what did I do wrong? And now I'm now we're just sort of like walking on eggshells, hoping not to trigger whatever that thing was. And so 
I'm just thinking like now to be able to apply that, that sometimes our anger is going to be so spot on appropriate. It's going to be very easy to put words around. Like I did not like when you did this spouse, child, in-law, like whomever. And sometimes it will come out and it'll be like, I don't really understand exactly why I'm mad. It might be this thing that happened a little earlier today. It might be the stress I'm carrying about tomorrow. Our bank account is pretty stressful. And also the way you're acting at bedtime, little child, is really bothering me. So you know what? I'm sorry for responding so big to the fact that you're not listening to me at bedtime. That You know what I mean? And so just sort of like Morning. allowing or, or just recognizing that sometimes it's going to come out more ambiguous and then we're going to have to like reel it in and figure out what was the thing we're actually upset about and where is an apology needed for the the sideways shooting out of the anger that wasn't actually meant to go there and then probably with time it would actually be easier to then be like okay this anger makes perfect sense Mm -hmm. lion growling at little cub who's doing the annoying thing Mm -hmm. but sometimes life is so complicated that it just feels like i'm really mad but spouse like i don't know if you did this (laughs) i don't know (laughs) if i'm mad at you because of this thing or if i'm just hormonal and tired and stressed about this other thing and for whatever reason you are really annoying me you know this is literally perfect what you're saying is like heaven and 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 is the basis for for perfect so great there's this um you know developmental psychologist neurobiologist buddhist named dan siegel you guys probably know his work and he talks about how all a child needs, and basically also as adults, all we need in order to be mentally well is a coherent narrative of reality. Mm. So if I blow up and rah, in a way that's disproportionate to what's going on, but I go, hey, my bank account's low. I'm sorry that I overreacted there. And you're being annoying, right? Yeah. Helps the child integrate. Okay, so that did feel off. That is why I see. So it's not mm. me. Life is not scary and unpredictable and chaotic. There's a reason. Mom's upset about her bank account. Got it. Okay. I can track all of that. And that creates a healthy psyche to be shared reality. It is That is all a child needs. A child can have ruptures of the wing-wing, violence, crazy, horrible things happen in their life. As long as one person in their life is holding with them reality Mm -hmm. of like, wow, your dad's really violent. And Mm -hmm. that's really scary and really not okay. And I'm sorry you're living with that. It's not you. Mm -hmm. That child will grow up to be okay. Whoa, mm. that's but if so no cool. one ever explains to them what the F is going on, right. that's when the mind starts to splinter and, wow. and the whole world just feels like a chaotic mess and nothing feels safe. Mm. So all we need is just wow. one coherent narrative reality. Now that said, during our generation, we're developing the capacity to have a coherent narrative of reality and to own our, our growing edges. Our parents' generation does not seem to have that capacity. Mm-hmm. I think this is evolution. Mm-hmm. I think we're being born at a time where for the first time, a, a percentage of us is hungry to know the truth. We're mm-hmm. hungry for self-awareness. We're hungry to see ourselves clearly. We're hungry to grow. Our parents' generation is allergic mm-hmm. to shadow, self-awareness. Not all of them, but almost all of them are terrified of talking about what's going on under the surface. And that's not because they're bad. I think it's because we're literally going through a time of human evolution where we're developing this new capacity. I call us who want to know, I call us the six fingered tribe mm-hmm. because it's like we're gro- we've grown an extra appendage. Like we have this totally new faculty that did, was not in the generations before. Mm-hmm. And so as enraging as it is and own your rage and feel your rage that your parent couldn't, wouldn't, and probably still can't give you that. Mm-hmm. But also just if you can have the compassion of like, they literally don't have that faculty. Mm. Like I have the blessing and the curse of wanting to know and having the capacity to know, and they don't, they don't have it. So Mm. it's not that they don't love me. It's that they, for whatever reason, it's too scary to go inside. It's too scary to look at the shadow. It's too scary to say, oh, whoops, I made a mistake. Oh, Mm. that was my fault. Oh, I I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, most of, most people in that generation just, it's, it's far too frightening and disorganizing for them to do that. Mm-hmm. Wow. But what I'm not hearing you say is that we should then uh, accommodate that in our own lives, right? That we should approach them in their world and their space and adapt to their rules, right? Like we should know and have the grace and the space for them to not be able to do this well, but also hold our own shape and, and live in the forward-looking way. 
Yeah, I think it's I think it's kind of that thing we were saying earlier. If you want to teach your child, your anger is your control over your body, not the other body. So mm-hmm. it's like being like, hey, mom, I don't want to hear parenting advice from you. That's my line of my in my sphere. Like, I don't want to be penetrated by that. That's that's a that's a no for me. But it's not, mom. Do you know why you try to tell me parenting advice, but you can't mm. take any parenting advice because you don't know how to be self aware? That's you going into their space yeah. and trying to reorganize their psyche, their experience. And that is probably a fool's errand. And mm-hmm. it's a little not fair to them because like the only thing we should have control over is our space. So like, right. like this is what I don't need over here, but I'm not going to go inside of you and yeah. try to therapize you or educate you or need you to see. I need you to see. I need you to see why this is not okay. It's like, yeah. hey, that's, that's, that's wow. That's scary for them. And it's probably not going to work and it's probably going to cause a lot of ruptures, but more like, I don't need you to understand this. You Mm -hmm. may see me as a total asshole. That's fine. But I just need you to know where my line is. Mm -hmm. Because when when that line is respected, we're going to get along great. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I want. I want to get along great with you because I love you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard you phrase it as like, you're just showing them how to treat you which is actually like a huge relief Mm -hmm. because they love you. (laughs) People want to know how to treat you. People want to know how to get love across from them to you. And if you can show them how, it's actually quite a gift. Yeah. And that said, you know, some parents with like severe personality disorders, like don't want to know how to treat you and aren't going to hear you even if you say 7,000 times. And and then that may require even deeper levels of boundaries. I don't know. That's mm-hmm. a hard one. I mean, some of us here know about that. Um, we sure do. <laughs> not all parents are not all parents are fit to come into the new world with us. Right. Yeah. Right. You right. know, makes sense. Yeah. Whew, wow, Sam. Yeah, <laughs> I feel so, so full. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Gone. Oh my yeah, gosh, this is super helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you feel like there's anything either of you that? Any holes in this conversation? Do you feel like you have any lingering questions, Jess or Sam? Anything that you're like, oh, that would I would like to get that across? No, I feel. I mean, personally, I'm just going to be digesting this, journaling about this. Like, I see it. I see it being something that I need personally, and then mm-hmm. just I want to integrate it into the way that I work with moms because I think for so long, I don't know if it's a woman thing. Like something about anger, it's like it hasn't been allowed. It's don't, oh, that's disruptive. Mm -hmm. Calm down. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's just not a healthy way to do this. And, and actually how beautiful will life be if we are in touch with our natural anger and can communicate that and can raise kids who are able to do that. Yeah. It really, it's a powerful thing, but yeah, it does feel newer that people would be encouraged to pay attention to it and use it appropriately and you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. it feels more like just Mm -hmm. quiet that one down that one's really kind of messy and we don't we don't have time for that yeah it's interesting along that gender divide too because I don't feel like we we have there has been space made like if you think about being in a boardroom like women are supposed to contain all their emotions and do not cry but men are allowed to yell, but the yelling is also, it's not like they're allowed to use anger well either, (laughs) right? Right. Like they're, they're allowed to explode sometimes, but like we're, we're all being given not, not the integrated version, not the whole yourself from the inside of you. And here's how it works Mm -hmm. version. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You know, I was raised by a single mom who was very um, uh, masculine and aggressive and successful. And so I never had the split of masculine feminine. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of families and couples where the woman is the one who's angry and in charge and bossy. And the man's the one who is supposed to hold it all in and never get angry and just do whatever the wife says. And so I don't personally see that, that split of, oh, it's men that are the aggressive ones and women that are the submissive ones. But when we were raised in a family, when the men were aggressive and the women were submissive, that's how we see the world. And that's what feels real to us. Mm -hmm. And in vice versa, vice versa. Um, But I do think if you are, you know, listening and you're the aggressive one and your spouse is the submissive one, make room for your spouse's anger and Mm -hmm. maybe, you know, apologize for how scary it must have been for all the explosive outbursts or whatever. And vice versa, if you're the one who's been more submissive, let's experiment with you getting a little more wild, you know? And if it's like, no, that's going to be disruptive. It's like, lock yourself in a room, 
and like almost overact it, like stomp around and swing your arms and be like, <laughs> you know, like explore letting your body express anger because when we are submissive, we have these inhibition mechanisms in our brains around our aggression. Mm -hmm. And they actually have to be, we actually have to push past that inhibition in order to um, let our mammalian brains know that it's okay to no longer be the beta pack animal. I could speak mm -hmm. about this all day, but it's <laughs> if you've been conditioned to be the beta pack animal in your family system and not the alpha, there are literal um, like neurological pathways that block aggression. And so as soon as you start to aggress, shame comes in and your head hangs or you cry or you laugh or your shoulders curve in. Mm -hmm. And so experimenting, I do this thing called wall work where you put your shoulders back and you push against the wall and you, <clears throat> you say no and you grunt. You could hit a pillow, you could yell, you could swing your arms, you could go into nature, you could do a barbaric yawp, but you want to start yeah. teaching your body that the expression of anger and the embodiment of anger is safe and natural and you're an alpha. You're you're your own boss, you're sovereign. Um, yeah. That's so really cool. important. The other one little thing I was thinking in terms of gaps was um, as, as we all go through this awkward dawning of integrating our anger, a lot of it's going to be messy. Some of it's going to be that anger that's not proportionate, you know, whatever. And we're not, none of us are going to do it perfectly. Yeah. So if you can just find it in your heart to have grace for yourself, for your spouse and for your children in this process of learning how to integrate it, because let's say, you know, if Lane gets angry at me in a way that doesn't feel fair to me, if I were to hold a grudge against that, that's actually now again, my anger held in and festering into cruelty. If I'm mm -hmm. silently resenting Lane or withholding from Lane or being like, mm -hmm, I guess she's like that, then mm -hmm. that doesn't allow us to be relational. So I try to open my heart really wide when people make mistakes, when they do things in ugly ways, ways that don't feel fair or healthy. It's like, wow, that was a, an awkward um, attempt at relating. And I'm going to keep my heart open and say, hey, that didn't feel good to me. And mm -hmm. what was that for? you and I love you and it's safe for you to do this in an ugly, awkward way. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's safe for me to do this in an ugly, awkward way. And like, this is not mm -hmm. about like, well, you didn't do it the way Dr. Sam said to do it. It's like, yeah, no, no, we're not going to do it the way Dr. Sam said to do it. Like, we're just yeah. going to try, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, things get triggered. Totally. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. Yeah. I think that's perfect perspective to looping back to like, fostering the healthy development of anger in your children too is knowing like they're going to be practicing this mm -hmm. like human animal life yeah. and they're going to do things that would not be okay <laughs> for adults to do mm -hmm. and we get to say like yes to your anger and let me guide the way that you're letting that feeling out mm -hmm. and it's okay that that was not a great one didn't love it please don't do that again let's try this that's okay yeah. you know like that I, I think that's the perfect lens mm -hmm. yeah so I think we're knowing right now that like openness and mm. honesty and like a continuous dialogue about all this stuff is is really the the ambient texture that's going to support the integration of healthy aggression. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like if, say like I'm a woman listening to this and this has not been the standard operating procedure in my partnership, if mm -hmm. I decide like I'm going to learn a new thing about myself in this way and yeah. like get to live, do you think yeah. that's something that she should bring to the partner probably? Yeah, And say like, hey, podcast. I just learned a thing and I'm going to be different <laughs> and, yes. and that different is just going to be more me and yeah. I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah. And have okay. them listen to this podcast because mm – -hmm. Why not let everyone in behind the curtain of like, hey, mm -hmm. we're in this messy, awkward thing of trying to do human together. Like, yeah. let's, let's talk about it. Like, what do you think about this? And by the way, those listeners, you don't need to agree with me either because you having your own knowing, that's part of your healthy anger is you might be like, oh, I was with Sam until she said that. And that's mm -hmm. actually a no for me. It's like, oh, good. Feel that no, like disagree with me, like do it your own way, you know, mm -hmm. that's so great. Ooh, that's so good. We're, we're at our time and I want to be respectful of letting you go when you need to go. But oh my gosh, Sam, I'm so obsessed with you. I've been obsessed with you every day of my life and I'm more obsessed with you today than I ever was. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I'm going to finish this podcast. crazy because I feel the exact same way about you from the <laughs> second we had our first phone call. I was like, oh my God, what is this woman? Because <laughs> of your healthy boundaries from the first time we talked. Yeah. I Gosh. adore you. The more I know you, the more I love you. Mm. 
Thank you for this. This is such yeah. a huge gift to my life. And I, I know the specific women who are going to listen to this for whom it's going to matter so much. I'm so. one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I always end up yeah. listening back to episodes, not as this person, but as the, like the, the woman, mom, wife, small business owner person who's just like, could you just teach me? Mm-hmm. And this one specifically, I'm like, wow, this is like, this is, this is a therapy session for a lot of people who desperately need it and wouldn't know to go ask for it because mm-hmm. we don't know what we're missing yeah. by suppressing mm-hmm. anger. But this was really like a good kind of eye-opening thing of like, no, this thing that you've been taught was bad or felt was bad. This is very important and healthy. Mm-hmm. So thanks so much for giving your time to this. Yeah. Really Welcome. appreciate it. Lena, is there anything we should promote while we're here? I mean, that's a good question. Um, I do think that this episode will in like – the, the timeline, it'll be two or three weeks from now. Okay. Well, maybe, I mean, just as an ongoing thing, I have a membership. Mm-hmm. It's $22 a month where you get mm-hmm. to hang out with me live on wow. Zoom for an intimate hang twice a month with like a group of wow. total love bugs and we just mm-hmm. support each other and grow and it's incredible. Yeah. Um, and you have a whole team of people who are trained in your particular style of healing who if anybody's like, oh, I, I yes. feel a thing inside. I This is what I need. There's yes. a whole group of beautiful, beautiful people standing yes. behind Sam ready to serve you in one-on-one sessions. Yeah. One-on-one coding is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then also I think by the time this airs, we should have the, <clears throat> the stuckness to flow um, little course up. Oh, which um, is about integrating your anger and using it to get what you want in life. Um, oh, perfect. It's gonna be, I think it's going to be priced at pay what you can. It's going to be like a donation okay. only oh. like gift economy thing. So oh, pretty much yeah. anyone listening can, can download that. Absolutely. Um, well, check the description if you're a listener. If that link is ready, that will be right there. Yeah. And if not, there will be lots of other soon. links to direct yeah. you to Sam's work and you can keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Love you too. Have a beautiful Friday. Okay. That was amazing. This this outro we can make short because that was needy. (laughs) Enough. Yeah. But you please join our Zoom Mm -hmm. calls. Wouldn't it be so great to just gather everybody and we all talk about what does this look like in your life? What do you think? What do you feel? Mm -hmm. (gasps) We need to talk about it. There's a need need to to process this with a a collective language Mm -hmm. and like as people who now have heard a thing Mm -hmm. together and and figure out how to like – you know, like metastasize mm-hmm. it, like the chewing and then that digesting part yeah. of like new information and and a new way of being. And I, I want to yes. do that live yes. with you guys. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So join Very Good Mothers Club if you haven't already. It's an amazing community of moms mm-hmm. from different parts of the world. And once a month, Lane and I get in there via Zoom and chat with whoever wants to connect. And we're going to process this episode mm-hmm. among other things. This one's really important. Yeah. So we'll see you there. Bye. Bye.